Welcome to the Ningaloo Reef, a place bursting with ocean life, the home of more than 2,000 different marine species, an incredible part of the Australian coastline. The turquoise blue water teemed with a reef so colourful and vibrant as well as large populations of marine megafauna are just some of the reasons that make this coast so special. Over the next few episodes, we take you underwater, exploring the wonders of the reef and experiencing just how incredible this place is. First on the agenda this morning, find somewhere to either surf or dive. No waves. I could try it. Yeah. Did you see it? Not really. Was it on the sand? So I think we might go snorkel or dive instead. snack and then we're going to head down to the beach and go for a little snorkel. Imagine it, it's my new best friend and ready's all wow. I Looks so blue, doesn't it? One of the things we love about Ningaloo is how accessible the reef is. Oh, it's so sick. You can plunge straight into the turquoise water from the shore and within seconds be greeted by big, curious fish, colourful coral and a reef shark or a turtle if you're lucky. Wow, this is beautiful. The Queensland Gropa is the largest bony fish to be found on coral reefs. They grow to 2.7 metres on average and generally weigh around 400 kilos. That is a big fish. What a monster! <laughs> Gropa are huge. They're just such big barrels. So chunky. Okay, I feel pretty silly about this, but at the time I was so focused on getting a shot with the second stingray that I didn't even see the first one buried in the sand. <laughs> yeah. I oh, know. Crazy. There's just so much life here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting pretty cold now though. At one point though, I crapped myself when I was filming that little ray. I'm not wearing a weight belt, so I've been struggling to stay down. And I moved my hand with a bit of force and there was another ray right underneath me. And when I moved my hand, it just shot up and took off, but it was buried in the sand, so I couldn't see it. Yeah, it gave me a bit of a fright though. Getting down. Well, that was a great snorkel slash dive. <laughs> we saw lots of lots of fish. Snorkel slash dive. <laughs> I don't know what to call it sometimes. Like what defines a dive, like a free dive, opposed to a snorkel? Depth. The depth, like do you have to go deeper than a certain depth for it to be a free dive? Or maybe snorkeling's when you're just on the surface. So it was a snorkel slash 
dive because we were yeah. doing both. Oh, I get you now. I yeah. Get you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've had some lunch. Which everyone will be able to see from the pasta <laughs> all over your face. Damn it. <laughs> My face. It's like all around your mouth and in your teeth. Oh. Also, we came back at, to the car at like just the right time. I know, right? We were just down the beach and it takes like five minutes to walk back to the car. And then started sprinkling and then now it's like bucketing down. Look, look at that. It hasn't rained for us like this for ages too. I think we've had like one day of rain like this in Western Australia. We've been here for what, five months? Yeah, five months, yeah. Five months. Look at this. Look at that. We're in the desert. I thought it doesn't rain in the desert. I know. But the forecast for the rest of the week looks sunny every day. So that'll be good. Anyway, we're going to go for a drive to somewhere else. Probably just chill for the afternoon, I'd say. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I said, hey, what's going on? <laughs> it's that time of the day when we start to get silly. <laughs> silly time. Oh, it's blind lens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, nice. Duh, but nice. Nice. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh. Actually, you just go for a one meter walk on this beach and you find the most beautiful little gems. continue to explore more of the reef, but this time from a boat with some of our mates. This place has proven to be really special and we have just loved spending so much time underwater in our happy place. The Ningaloo Reef is one of the longest and most pristine fringing reefs in the world. It stretches more than 300 kilometres from Red Bluff in the south to Northwest Cape and is a UNESCO World Heritage listed area. What makes the area so unique is how multiple habitat types unite to form an amazing interconnected ecosystem. The continental shelf here is extremely narrow, so deep oceanic waters juxtapose shallow coral reefs resulting in a marine environment so rich with life, it is one of the world's most important biodiversity hotspots. The high abundance and diversity of marine life here on the Ningaloo can also be attributed to how undisturbed the area is. The landmass here is so remote and untouched, and there is very little development or anthropogenic uses of the land and sea. It just goes to show how mother nature can flourish if us humans leave it alone. So we're back on the plunger coffees because our Bellman is broken. Our little stovetop coffee machine. Yeah, we um we broke it. It was a team effort. We just broke the O-ring in the bottom of the unit. So we're just waiting to get it sent, but it's so hard trying to get things posted out when you're moving around. So we've been playing a bit of cat and mouse with that O-ring. So at the moment, we bought ourselves a little plunger. It's getting the job done, but it's not the same. Pretty keen for a good coffee. Morning. I just said how we broke the Bellman. I said it was a team effort. It's a touchy subject. Not happy. We won't go like into that? it. No. Make 
Making our bed requires two people. How sick is this? Great. Oh. Now it's getting warm, so we're gonna go for a swim. And then I think we're just gonna hang out on this beach because it's very nice. We're going down into the National Park tomorrow night, which is about an hour drive from here, so it's stocked up. Um, so I can spend a few days down there without having to come back. So one thing I find tricky about going and spearing at new places is learning all the fish species and knowing what you can take and what you can't take and what are good eating and what aren't good eating. We've done a little bit of diving up, up in North Queensland, so a lot of the species here are similar to the ones up there but there's different species that you can take here from land-based spearfishing and what you can't take as well. So it gets a bit confusing, so we'll see how we go. I've just been loving reading at the moment. I'm just obsessed. I cannot put this book down that I'm reading at the moment. So that's all I've been doing like most of the day. Check this thing out. Whoop. Whoop. We've got a crazy dragonfly over here. Where'd he go? Oh, there it is. Oh, whoa, it's quick. <laughs> just flew at me. <laughs> Ooh, yum. Veggie burgers. That was good. It will be good. Will it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it will. got a book recommendation for you all. It's called The Alchemist. It's probably one of the best books I've ever read. Basically, it's a story about a guy who goes off looking for his treasure, but the messages in the book are just incredible, talking about how when we're young, we have all these dreams and aspirations and nothing is impossible. Everything seems clear to us. And then as we get older, a mysterious force gets in the way of us realizing our dreams and we become controlled by fate. Basically, we end up in a position where we never thought we'd be, where we don't want to be, because we thought that what we once um, dreamed of or thought we could do isn't possible anymore. The book's kind of written around the author's own life. All these messages kind of revolve around what happened to him. He went about his 20s and 30s knowing he wanted to be a writer. He was 39 when he published his first book, and then he published this when he was 41. And in the first year, he sold three copies. He just thought the book was a complete failure, but he trusted in the book because he knew that it was based on his life story in a way. And so he took it to another publisher and eventually people started picking it up and reading it. And now it's the most translated book ever, I think. And it's regarded as one of the top 10 best books in the 20th century. So it's pretty incredible how he didn't give up on his dreams. He trusted in it. It's just an inspiring story and I highly recommend everyone to read it. Another thing he talks about is basically if you go on with your life with a dream, but believing that you can't achieve it or not going for it, Oh wow, that's so good, just stay there. You're not gonna stop thinking about it for the rest of your life and you're kind of gonna regret that you didn't take a chance or take an opportunity to do what you wanted to do. That's basically how he lived his life. He worked at jobs that paid really well throughout his 20s and 30s but didn't fulfill him and he didn't, didn't fulfill his purpose until he started writing. And he basically has become one of the most successful authors but it took him a long time to realize that. But yeah, it's incredible. Inspiring, highly recommend. Mm -hmm.